Hi everyone and you're very welcome to another episode with Remy and myself on Narcon and on our channel we discuss everything to do with narcissists for the purpose of protecting ourselves against their behaviours. It's not a condemnation as such of narcissists or the people they could have been in general but our purpose is to help people that have been affected by the behaviours of narcissists and to enable us to understand it and recognise it. So today I'd like to, kind of in a more chatty mode, um, just have a general discussion with you as if you're sitting here, we're all sitting here together in a group, together discussing our experiences with narcissists and sharing information, which is crucial in relation to getting the word out there. So if anyone can share the information, of course, please do so share, share the podcasts. And as a point of information prior to getting launched into this particular podcast, which is going to cover um, the, the, the pain of the discard and how to reverse a narcissist's discard and how to overcome it. And in understanding what it's all about, it's the starting point, in my opinion, of overcoming the disease. The cure is an understanding what caused the disease and then we can treat it. So that's the way I'm looking at it today um, in the hopes that the information will assist people in the deep, dark despairs of pain in the excruciating survival stages of the discard and further along the line indeed. So what I was going to say was the book that I've recently released called, called Weaponized Love in relation to how narcissists think, function and um, work on us, basically. Um, people in Ireland couldn't and can't still get the paperback version in Amazon.co.uk. I have tried to change that. The only version available to Irish people would be the Kindle version or the hardback version. If you want to get the paperback, which is obviously cheaper than the hardback, um, if you go to Amazon.de for Germany or Spain, then they will send that on to you if that's um, if you want the hardback copy. So let's get into this. Basically, a narcissist discards their target or supply source, their main supply source, because that person has put in boundaries, is getting too difficult to get the pump working, to pump out that supply and needs to be discarded. Uh, a new object of supply needs to be chosen and the person who's discarded needs to be punished for letting the narcissist down. Now, that's that. That's it in a nutshell as to what's going on there in the discard. Understanding the narcissistic personality disorder and understanding that the discard and the way you are meant to feel about being discarded and the fact that it's not actually the final discard that the narcissist will be back. And the fact that the discard is a total illusion and it's part of a narcissist behavior cycle, I'm hoping will help you. Because a lot of people end up a year after the discard, having gone through a year where everything in their life has fallen apart. They find it very hard to pick themselves up. They have no hope. They're very depressed and they want to, you know, survive and go forward. So they've been through all this excruciating time and the narcissist pops up a year later saying hi. As if nothing has happened, willing to go back into a relationship with you. Should you not have heard about who and what they are and decide to give it another go for whatever great excuse they come up with. But it's as if nothing has never happened. You have spent a year of your life or maybe more where you've been stuck, where you haven't moved forward, where things have fallen apart. You have suffered and it was an illusion. The narcissist just changed their mind, went to somebody else all very purposefully. And I will leave a link to that video as to, without getting into the details, as to why a narcissist discards and why it is carried out in the most cruel way possible at the most vulnerable time for you possible to hit you as hard 
as is possible if we can get your head around another human being doing that to another human being. It's a big, big punishment. So, pain. I'd like to look at pain. It's a debilitating emotion. It's one most of us want to avoid at all costs. We will do a lot of things to avoid pain. We will we'll partake in addictions. We'll want the narcissist back. We will want to go to sleep all the time. We will do anything to avoid pain because our brain tells us pain is not good for us. Pain is, you know, against our survival. So our primal instincts tell us that pain is a signal that there's something wrong and that it needs to be avoided or put right. So I would like to look at a little bit without getting in too deep into the origins of pain. And I, I'd say this to you that I'm speaking about this, not having learned this in textbooks, not from a theory point of view, but from one that has tasted it and tasted the excruciating levels of emotional and psychological and deeply spiritual pain that comes from an interaction with somebody who has no empathy, you know, who, who doesn't present in human terms as a human being at different points in their life when they do some of these things, when they're at their worst, their most cruel. So I would like to give you my thoughts on what I actually went through and coming out the other side of that and what that feels like and how without this triggering anyone, because it sure would have triggered me at the beginning stages of being left by a narcissist where I still felt, you know, I loved that person deeply and that it was a proper relationship and all those things and did not want to hear otherwise. Because I had put so much, invested so much in it and had believed in it so much and had given it everything. I did not want to hear somebody telling me that it wasn't real, that it was a narcissist I was dealing with and that the pain that I was in, someday I would bless it. Someday I would thank God for getting rid of the narcissist. I would thank God for the level of pain I had been in because without that doorway into myself and a deeper understanding of life, I would have missed that. I would never have been able to push myself to the limit of the deepest joy and an exquisite understanding of life commensurate with the level of pain experienced. It's like as if if you come to earth and there is cold, the earth is cold and you've never experienced warm you experience cold and all the symptoms of it, but you don't actually know what the opposite of cold is to understand that feeling warm is so much different to feeling cold. If that's a simple, it's a very simple analogy as to when you're warm, you have a better understanding of what cold actually is than just say living in the cold all the time and never experiencing anything other. So that is a very simple analogy as to what the deeper understanding you come to having had the experience of being at rock bottom, having had the experience of surviving hour to hour, day to day, having had the experience of not having hope, having had the experience of when you wake up saying, oh, no, because when I was asleep, I didn't have to feel this pain. And I can't escape it. It's not a physical thing. I can't run from it. The only thing I can do is dim it with alcohol or whatever people take to dim it, food. So you get the picture. I'm speaking from experience and having come out the other side and having spoken to a lot of people who have come out the other side and have actually said, I'm so glad I went through that experience, not because of the pain the narcissist caused, 
but the way they process the pain, the way they chose to embrace the opportunity that was given to them to start again from scratch in relation to who they wanted to be in their life and to self-define that experience, to have a deeper understanding of life and people and making a new direction with that clarity of thought where you literally start with a clean slate. The other thing about pain I'd like to explore is when we start in life, we 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 all start in the same way in relation to our brain not being full of information. So we're like a, a new computer program that's absorbing information that's being written. And depending on our experiences, our young experiences, and as we grow up, we form an identity. But that identity is often formed on the basis of other people's reactions and interactions with us and their opinion of us and who we should be. So if you get my drift in relation to this, We become that person, you know, that identity. Now, we have a core identity, but in my opinion, we have kind of concentric circles of other ideas of who we are. We know at the core who we are. It's like a spiritual knowing that we came from somewhere and we went into a human body. So we know who we are. There's a knowing. But the color around us is the other identity features. That's the best way I can describe it. So when we identify with an identity as such, you know, a human identity, um, input from a lot of experiences and other people's sometimes idea of who we are when we haven't actually maybe self-actualized in life or we haven't had the drive, the drive of anger, the drive of ambition, the drive of narcissism, the drive of ego to brush a lot of those opinions aside and decide who we are you know, who, who we, we want to be, who we want to be, who is more true to our nature. This is a very, you know, extraordinary journey. I'd actually reference it, and I did have a discussion recently with one of you um, about the matrix and living in the matrix before we go through the pain barrier of leaving the matrix. So... We have this idea of who we are and when we have an interaction with the narcissist and particularly a discard from the narcissist, all of those things that we think we are and that we're told we're not and that we're absolutely the worst case failure scenario that ever walked Earth, ever walked the planet Earth or flew in space, as only a narcissist can tell you, and how everything is your fault. Then we feel pain. And we feel. We don't know who we are. We feel. Am I the version of myself I was before? Or am I the narcissist's version of me? And everything seems outside of you. Like as if. When you speak to the next person and the next person and the next person and get their opinion on what happened and try and get it straight in your head as to what actually did happen, particularly when you don't have the knowledge about narcissism and the personality disorder and whatever else you would like to call it. Darkness. Then we go through a very confused period of identity to tea crisis and oftentimes we'll see a narcissist going off and doing everything that we liked to do and essentially seeming to steal our identity nearly they call that character trait acquisition when the narcissist goes off and essentially acts like you with your interests with the new supply so it's a very confusing time but I would say when we're in that state 
we can do a lot to alleviate the pain because pain is actually our thought process of being a failure. Our thought process of accepting the narcissist's negativity. We have been isolated. Our hormones are pretty low. So there's a lot of other things, physical things going on. And we've gone through a brainwashing process with the narcissist. But if we can look and see Why am I feeling so much pain? Why is this so excruciating? It's actually what you believe. It's what you're believing that's causing the pain. And you can say, well, oh, that's all very well and good, Paula. I just start to believe something else and the pain will go away. It doesn't happen quickly. But if you actually analyse Things like what the narcissist said, that you're so bad. Well, why am I so bad? The narcissist told you who you were. Well, first of all, do they have the merit as a quality person to tell me who I am? Does one person have that authority over another person? Actually, no. Only you has the authority to decide who you are in truth. So... Therefore, is my belief in what the narcissist said or my scrambled brain that doesn't know who I am causing the pain? Or did the narcissist present me with all of my dreams coming true and I enjoyed that, partaking in that because they offered me everything I told them that I wanted and now they've gone. So has the potential and the possibility of my dream gone with them? That, my friends, is the illusion the narcissist wants to leave us with. And believing in that illusion is the main cause of our pain. There are other contributing factors such as your physical depletion, adrenal failure from fatigue in putting out for the narcissist, your isolation from all your other self-regulating hormonal activities so you're depleted in the feel-good hormones but the main thing that causes the pain is your belief in the narcissist's projection onto you of their bad self of their shame of who they really are they've called you a liar they've called you unfit for a relationship they've called you a cheater They're trying to spew up what they are in themselves so they can walk away dumping that on you and then dumping you and that in the thrash. So what I'm saying about pain is it needs to be thought about. It needs to be examined and analysed as to the validity of the opinions, first of all, of everybody who told you who you are to be or who you are. That needs to be addressed. And then the narcissist's opinion of you needs to be addressed. And then this comes the wonderful time. And that's what I would like to talk about in relation to reversing the narcissist's discard and overcoming it. In my opinion, surviving this particular period is a day to day process, is an hour to hour process. Incrementally each day, if you can do something towards a destination that it would be a good idea for you to think about heading in, I would get a piece of paper, get a notebook, get a journal, whatever you would like to use on your recovery journey. And the next book is going to be all about this. Set yourself a destination of what your ideal world would look like, what your ideal location would look like, your ideal occupation or job would look like, and your ideal relationship would look like with everyone. Decide then the best version of yourself, how you'd like to see yourself, the qualities you would like to have, because I'm quite guessing you may have them already. And incrementally, no matter how far away that dream would be, I would start building towards it. Even if, supposing you imagined a beautiful garden, even if it's 
buying a plant, even if it's researching how to make a beautiful garden, even if it's drawing a plan of it, whatever you can do incrementally each day to put in place a part of you and your future will incrementally or decrementally get rid of the narcissist out of your head as being the solution to all of your problems and being the dream that you thought you had. What you created with an, a narcissist was a narcissist allowing you to live in a dream for a certain period of time before they started to harvest you for supply. They got you into the thinking and the illusion that they were the cause of your happiness because they provided the dream. And that's a uh -uh. they didn't provide your dream. Your emotions in the space feeding into your ideal situation created that happiness. They facilitated that for a period of time. But they weren't real. They weren't a real person with substance, if that's, it's hard to imagine sometimes when they're standing in front of you saying things, but look at their actions in relation to supporting that relationship or dream that you had and you get your answers as to how committed or invested or capable they were of the stability that was required and the love that was required to support that dream. My friend, you are the creator of the life that you want to lead. And you must yourself create that life before anybody can come in and share it with you. But if you do create that life, no one can take it away from you because it's your creation built brick by brick by brick. So you can welcome an equal to come in and share that life with you. But when they leave, they don't leave and take your life and your dream with them. Because you've built it from scratch. It belongs to you. You're happy and love to share with somebody who can see you. Who isn't providing you with a takeout that's going to not be good for your health in long term. It's, it's called a proper, nutritious, slow cooked experience that you are and have the authority over. The person will come if you build it, the person will come and it will be built on solid foundations. The trick a narcissist will also play on us or we fall into the trap of this is that we think that the narcissist is the solution to all of our problems. They promise us and they future fake us that we will never have to fear again being the version of ourselves that we don't like or being in a position that we're very fearful of being in. And that can often be for different people it can be loneliness, it can be rejection, it can be the smearing of our good name, it can be becoming a homeless, it can be losing our job, it can be all of those particular things that we have come to fear from whatever happened to us as we grow up. Um, one of the, th the things we, we fear most and we stay away from and we do everything to protect ourselves in life from, with some people it can be putting savings by so that they're never going to be in a financially difficult situation that they maybe were in when they were children. The narcissist will give you the impression that they can protect you from your worst fears. And they find out what your worst fears are. And oftentimes we end up in a position 
where our worst fears come true in the discard, i.e. the narcissist may have financially cleaned us out. We may be homeless. We may be without our children. Our name may be smeared. Our worst fear is realised. Once your worst fear is actually realised, you have nothing left to fear, if you know what I mean. If you've survived a day where your worst fear is realised, you'll never have to fear that again because you're going to start, please God, with the support of our community and with God's help, you will survive and then you will go on to rebuild. And what you will rebuild will be so solid as you build it that you'll never have to fear going into that vulnerable position again because you now know how to get out of it and it's not as fearful. So, in a way, if you use your pain and the position you find yourself in at the discard, you can write a whole new life for yourself. You can self-define, you can go in a new direction. You've met rock bottom, you've met the worst version of who anybody could ever describe you as. So you've been actually given a gift, as we said in the beginning, to write a new life for yourself, become a bigger version of who you were before you started the relationship and more self-defined. And that is a gift if you use the motivation of the emotional pain to push you into that position and use it. Use the anger, use the pain as a motivator to make a whole new life for yourself. That is a miracle that you make happen. So when I speak about reversing the discard, I mean that the narcissist felt that they had the power and that they were going to throw you away and that they discarded you against your will. What I would say to you now is that you consciously discard the narcissist and this has two outcomes, not just in your head, but I'll tell you in a minute what the other outcome of this is. You consciously reverse the discard in your head and say it's nearly like casting out dark force I no longer am of you want anything to do with you I reject your ways I reject your darkness I feel sorry for the position that your soul is so depleted or dead that you feel you have to go about destroying other people. I reject you. And I accept myself for all my faults, for all my shortcomings, for all my good qualities. The trajectory of my life, I want to be as good as I can be. And to help other people who have been so disillusioned by a narcissist, so angered, so left embittered, so left without hope, that I will show some goodness towards a person. And if another person does that to another person, the belief in good and in humankind may be restored in my fellow man or woman or child. It is extraordinary what one person can do at the right time in somebody's life to help them change direction from being anger, angry and embittered to seeing a light, to believing in humanity again and to getting um, a contrast between narcissistic behaviour and empathic behaviour or inhuman behaviour and human behaviour. So you never know 
smiling at someone or doing some little deed to help somebody, you never know how important that may be in a person's life. And you have that power. You have that power in you. You have God in you. Don't let the narcissist or anyone take that away from you. Keep that light burning inside no matter how hard things get. Because the more you feed the light, the stronger the light gets and the joy comes back and the happiness comes back and it spreads and the narcissist hasn't hasn't managed to destroy. In fact, the opposite. They've managed to create God in abundance. Because light is always more powerful than the dark. So you can actually reverse the discard spiritually for yourself. You can use the discard to an advantage for yourself and for humanity in general. You can use it to not just overcome and defeat narcissism, but to actually obliterate it in your sphere and in your lifetime and for what you go on to do. Narcissists don't just come, the big baddie ones and the the multiple ones, they don't just come for anyone. They come for people that have a purpose. I say this in the book. I say that we're invaded. We're invaded by this undercurrent of a war we do not know we are fighting. And... It's important for an enemy to take out the strongholds first so that when the strongholds are gone, they can come in and, you know, influence the masses. So if you've been attacked by a narcissist or a group of them and very strongly attacked, there's a reason. You have something to do in your life. You have a purpose. Find it. You know it. It's inside you. You will actually know it. When you sit down and be truthful with yourself, you will know your purpose. Physically, the reversal of the discard comes as you reject the narcissist, as you reject the ways, as you reject the pain, as you escape the pain and transcend it, as the word gets out, as you look happy, as you rebuild your life that was, but build on to, build a new story onto that life, the narcissist will physically come back. That's when you have to be prepared. You have to be armoured up. But it's kind of a natural thing that happens once you understand what a narcissist is, the darkness that drives them, the usurpery, the destruction that always ensues from a relationship with a narcissist, no matter what good periods you go through. When you understand that and have put effort into your new life and have taken authority over your own life as to I decide who I am, and I don't mean in a narcissistic way, this doesn't change. You work on being the version of yourself that you want to be the best version. And the work that you put in is incrementally building strength within you that you're not just going to give all this work up for a takeout that the narcissist is offering you. You've built into this. Narcissist comes along and says, "Ah, I can make your life great. You kind of say, hey, buddy, my life is great. You can't make it any better. You know, you can join me and, you know, partake in it if you like the person you think they're not a narcissist. But you can't offer me like my life. You can't offer me my life. I own my life. I'm happy with my life. Sure, I'd like to share and spend some time with you, but you don't hold my dreams in your hand. No one does. I'm the only one that can make my dream come true. I am my dream. That's it for now, guys and gals. And if you can understand that principle and you can work towards that principle, you are their purveyor of your own pain. You are in control of your own pain. Will it happen overnight? No, because it wasn't created overnight. 
There was a lot of work done on you to bring you to this state of believing in the illusion, illusion of the narcissist, of believing in the illusion of who other people wanted you to be and put upon you to be and projected onto you to be. Now is your opportunity to really live your life and to own it. Bye for now. We will see you again very soon. Please take great care of yourselves in the meantime.